so much you subscribe and everybody in the remaining social network. It's Extract King, and today we're going to do another. Let's watch that reaction to death battle today. Raven versus Twinkle Sparkle. Really? Uh, seriously, truly, then I still can't believe that's what they went with. I mean, come on. Aren't there any other, you know, magicians to go with? Anyway, let's see how this ends. Also, disclaimer, this is Peter Christian Professor. No interesting conversation against you know the drill. And boy. This episode of Death Battle is brought to you by War Robots. Oh, the they got a new sponsor. Six v six multiplayer cool. game for iOS, Android, and Fire OS. The game's like if Wiz's love for science and my love for weapons had a baby, wrapped in rich 3D graphics. <laughs> Install War Robots now by clicking the link in the description and get a huge starter pack that contains a GI patent robot with a unique skin, four Punisher machine guns, 100 gold, and Interesting. 400 Interesting. He's got us sponsoring several of my favorite YouTubers. Not complaining. But not my cup of tea. Emotions can be powerful things. Uh, we're really gonna talk about feelings and crying and stuff. Well, <laughs> yes, and how they fuel some pretty powerful magic. Sounds good. Like with Raven, the half demon sorceress from the Teen Titans, and Twilight Sparkle, the magical prodigy from My Little Pony. <laughs> yep, we're really doing this again. He's weird, yeah. and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Well, this is gonna be interesting. A strong emotion can drastically change a person. Fear can trigger instincts necessary for survival. Anger can increase adrenaline for incredible feats of strength. And for this edgy looking chick in a wicked cloak, that's kind of her thing. This is Raven. From the day Raven was born in her home dimension of Azeroth, she wasn't the most popular girl around. Yeah, it's not exactly a good sign when right as you're born, the sky turns black and the whole world suddenly smells like farts. <laughs> See, Raven is the daughter of a human mother and a fearsome demon. Who is literally made up of hatred. Not even kidding. Because of her heritage, Raven's own mental state holds the key to a fearsome inner power. She is an empath, a mage who can sense, create, and manipulate emotions. So her powers are all about feelings and stuff? That's pretty lame. Tell that to her when she scrambles your brain, or forces you to feel so greedy you steal from your boss. Oh, you don't need to convince me to do that. Wait, what? <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, that's pretty intense. But hey, she's got a lot more deadliness packed away under that cool cloak. When she was 18 years old, Raven met her father for the first time. And it, uh, didn't go very well. Of course yeah, didn't. Demon Dad shot her mom with a grandma laser. That pissed off Raven so much, she finally let loose. This shadowy figure is her soul self, an extension of her spirit and manifestation of the powers inherited from Triga. Raven often wields it as her primary means of offense and defense, though it can function on its own. I wish I had a pet bird that could do what the soul self can. <laughs> this beauty lets Raven fly, use its eyes and ears, or just punch people like a big old battering bird. It can drain uh -huh. the energy and powers of others and also serves as a sort of pocket dimension, which Raven can trap a limited number of foes and objects within. Talk about wow. convenient, but she can do way more. She can levitate, teleport, heal others, cast energy shields, phase through walls, and blast people with mystical energy beams. But there is one drawback. To wield her power, Raven must embrace emotion, and too much emotion risks opening her mind to Trigun's corruption. When she gives in to her darker side, her entire personality changes. What's the matter? Afraid of the dark? I surrender! Under a new persona appropriately named Dark Raven. Dark Raven really? is stronger, tougher, and freakier than your everyday Raven. She can shoot lasers from her eyes, disintegrate stuff with her hand beams, and shapeshift. And her soul self is so powerful, it can wipe most people off the face of the earth in an instant. However, Dark Raven's incredible capabilities are a double-edged sword. By tapping into her father's demonic powers, she risks transporting Trigon himself to the living realm, kickstarting devastation across the universe. Kickstarting? I wonder what the tier rewards are like for that. Pledge 20 bucks and get an autograph from Satan. Thankfully, <laughs> she has been able to free herself from Trigon's control, granting her unlimited access to her own magical abilities. 
Sometimes she even wears white to celebrate the occasion. Or is that just for her wedding with Beast Boy? Oh wait, that ah. never happened. These comic books reboot way too often for any relationships to actually have lasting consequences. Ah. Silly me. Last yeah. but not least, it is really. Raven's golden form. Oh. A spiritual body free from Dragon's influence, which manifested after she turned evil and had to be killed by her friends, the Teen Titans. Oh, that's messed up. It happens a lot, actually. Anyway, Raven's accomplished plenty of incredible feats. She's bent steel girders with her magic, toughed out getting thrown butt first into a brick wall so hard it broke. Uh, the wall, not, not her butt. And <laughs> even helped Terra, a fellow Titan, raise the Teen Titans headquarters and the island it's on. Terra alone was barely able to stop the island's descent, and together they pushed it back up to its rightful place. Not bad. This means Raven lifted more than half of the island's weight. The Titan's Tower Island is similar in location and size to Alcatraz, which has a width of 559 yards. Assuming the most likely granite composition and accounting for a 30% hollow interior, Raven's energy output would need to be about 14 million megawatt hours. Yeah, That's GG. enough energy to power all of New York City for over three years. Raven's soul self can survive 30,000 feet below the surface of the ocean with no problem. That's almost 14,700 pounds per square inch, 42 times the PSI needed to crack most bones. Ouch. And it's tough enough to survive laser blasts from aliens that hurt Donna Troy, who can survive moon-busting attacks. The villain Sparta's lasers could disintegrate people in an instant, which requires nearly 3 billion joules of energy and Raven's soul self powered through several of these blasts and held together. The soul self is also stupidly fast. It once flew from New York City to Blue Valley, Nebraska, and back in less than five minutes. The Not distance bad. between those cities is 1,166 miles as the crow, or Raven, flies. <laughs> To make this trip in time, Raven's soul self must have flown more than 36 times the speed of sound. Not impressed? Well, when she was golden, ghosty Raven, she <coughs> flew between the earth and moon like it was nothing. So plenty of impressive feats, but unfortunately, Raven's powers have daunting and often costly limits. When the soul self takes damage, Raven feels the pain herself. She's kind of like a glass cannon, and overtaxes her own abilities pretty frequently. But don't disregard this as only mere physical ineptitude. When Raven utilizes emotions in combat, she tackles that emotion head on. The more negative the emotion, the more pain she feels. And don't forget, she's also struggling not to feel so Satan doesn't show up. With all that going on at once, it's no wonder she passes out sometimes. Yep. But with the help of her friends and her adoptive Azerathian family, Raven eventually overcame Trigon's iron grip and defeated him. Yeah, you'd think a guy like Trigon would think twice before messing with someone as powerful as Raven. No! You stay away from me! You demon filth! They're not demons. Let me show you one. Azeroth, Metrion, Synthos! Okay, so how's the pony be gonna beat her? <laughs> above the peaceful Ponyville, the city of Canterlot uh, rests among the mountains. I still mountain can't believe this. There, a young filly had dreams as big as Canterlot Castle itself. Her name was Twilight Sparkle. <sighs> Here we go again. Yep. I mean, we've seen a pony that breaks the sound barrier and one that breaks physics. So, <laughs> what crazy <laughs> powerful thing can this one do, Wiz? All to your horses, Boomstick. We're merely out of the gate. Ugh. Bring it in, Wiz. Your lame <laughs> puns are musting with my script. <laughs> Little Twilight wanted to learn magic at Princess Celestia's school for gifted unicorns. After a very, uh, eventful entrance exam, she didn't just get accepted into the school, she became Celestia's protege. Which is Not kind fast. of a big deal, since Celestia is pretty much pony god of the sun. Not only that, Twilight also earned her cutie mark. Oh, I remember those. It's that magical tramp stamp a pony gets when they grow up. Uh, close enough? Twilight's cutie mark symbolized her life's calling, specifically her destiny in mastering the art of magic. This peppy purple pony wasted no time and hit the books to practice hard. By the time she was an adult, she'd read her entire collection of 20,000 books. Ooh. <laughs> what a nerd. Boomstick, have you ever read a book before? Do gun manuals count? Sure, why not? Oh, there we go. Twilight learned all sorts of powerful and useful magic. She knows so many spells, it would take well over an hour to describe them all. 
Her memory is so crystal clear, she can recall a complex spell after a mere glance. But here's some highlights. She can move stuff with her mind, shoot concussive energy blasts, raise magic shields, and rapid fire teleport. She can manipulate gravity, ignite things on fire, freeze others in place, walk on clouds, and even master the transfiguration spell. As a filly, she turned her own parents into plants. Talk wow. about weird. She's even transformed a single apple into a nest of bird eggs, which uh, hatched somehow. She is great, life. Yeah. Wow. But Twilight's magic doesn't just stem from her vast knowledge of spells and history. In the world of My Little Pony, magic is drawn from and controlled by a unicorn's emotions. Oh, here uh. comes the touchy-feely stuff. Yeah. The stronger a unicorn feels about something or someone, the stronger their magic becomes. Well, I've always found magic is tied to my emotions. Whatever I'm feeling fuels whatever I'm doing. And the stronger I'm feeling, the stronger the magic. Across uh. Equestria, Twilight Sparkle is one of the few ponies to master the most powerful magic of all. The magic of friendship. Okay, ah! I know a metaphor when I see it. Isn't a night out with the girls so magical? <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's not it at all. In truth, friendship is the only weapon powerful enough to defeat Equestria's most dangerous enemies. What? They weaponized friendship? <laughs> awesome! Hey, Wiz, you're, you're my best buddy. I, you're friends forever. Come here, give me a hug. <laughs> Where are the friendship lasers? Get off me. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, upside. I didn't. I slipped. Um. Twilight's friendship magic is at its most powerful when focused through the elements of harmony. When used together, these ancient artifacts are a near unstoppable force, even capable of overpowering the villain Tyrek after he stole Twilight's powers along with the rest of Equestria's. Twilight's crown with her personal element contains a powerful magic in its own right, enough to literally change the fabric of reality in another dimension with its mere presence. And of course, we gotta uh -huh. talk about those wings of hers. She was born a unicorn, but after completing an ancient spell about, what else, friendship, she transformed into an alicorn. A mix between a unicorn and a pegasus, and a chance to sell just a whole ton more merchandise. <laughs> it's a good thing to oh, marketing magic is leagues more powerful than a plain unicorn's, and Twilight needed the extra boost to defend Equestria as its newest princess. Like when she fought that Tyrek guy. After Tyrek absorbed the magic from Equestria's entire population, Twilight was forced to confront him herself while wielding the power of four alicorns. Where did it become Dragon Ball Z with baby girl horse toys? Anyway, <laughs> check out how Tira rocketed Twilight straight into this mountain, and she was totally fine thanks to her magic shield. By comparing Twilight's apparent size just before impact to her actual size of approximately four feet tall, we can estimate the distance she was thrown to be about 145 feet. Tyrek then closed this distance at 64.5 miles per hour. Combined with his estimated weight of over 31,000 pounds, Twilight's shield had to stand up to over eight million newtons of force. Not bad. You know what? Forget it. I'm on board with this pony stuff. Twilight is tough enough to survive bombardment by anvils and pianos, <laughs> fast enough to fly over 300 miles per hour without using any spells, and Not even bad. strong enough to lift and carry a rock weighing four and a half tons. Her yes. telekinesis is strong enough to lift a 340 ton bear and even uproot this giant flower tree thing. And with the other alicorn's magic, she can move the sun and the moon. Okay, yeah, friendship power's way better than expected. <laughs> However, if Twilight has one glaring weakness, it's her unwavering neurosis. Oh, you mean how she's obsessed over staying organized and if one small thing goes wrong, she totally loses it? Yes. She has a, well, difficult time dealing with unexpected stress. More often than not, she even makes bad situations worse before starting to fix them. <laughs> but hey, when push comes to shove, Twilight Sparkle pulls her weight and more. You have no magic! You're wrong, T-Rex. I may have given you my alicorn magic, but I carry within me the most powerful magic of all, the magic of friendship. <laughs> Uh, all right, the so, curtains are set. The Let's Lord end Brun this debate Stewart. once and for all. But first, yep. prepare your loins for me undies. Oh. Okay, so they got new sponsors. Cool. 
Anyway, so who's gonna win? Mm, hard to say. The friendship magic is basically a Deus Ex Machina, but I think Raven have more interesting feats. Hard to tell, actually. We, unless I'm missing a couple of numbers, still. Well, it's a glass cannon against something that can survive pretty much anything. Hmm. Well, I'd say Raven, even maybe in, his, in her golden form, should be able to overpower her. So yeah, I'd say Raven wins. By how much? Yeah, that's hard to tell. Anyway, I wonder what happened to Blue Apron. Did they... Did they find it working or something? Anyway, let's do this. Let's get the cringe working. Let's give it a try. Oh. Yeah, I said. <laughs> you saw nothing. No one must know. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Here's a power boost. Was odd. KO! Dear Princess Celestia, <laughs> today I learned that the only thing more powerful than friendship is a giant bird spirit colliding into me at Mark 36. <laughs> this was a tricky one. Both Raven and Twilight possessed numerous spells and techniques that could end the other quickly and easily. Since they were pretty even in how many ways they could finish Actually, each other off, this, this fight really came down to strength, durability, uh, and performance. First of all, it's, actually it's pretty obvious Raven's quite... telekinesis has been shown to be much stronger than Twilight's. Yeah. But Wiz, what about when Twilight moved the sun and moon? That's when she had the magic of Princess Celestia and Luna, and it's well established that only their specific type of magic can move those celestial bodies. So, you're saying you want us to move the sun? And the moon. Well, I do it myself, except I don't have your magic. With her own magic, Twilight <laughs> has never shown anything close to the kind of force Raven used to lift the Teen Titans Tower. Raven had the durability advantage, too. Remember how Twilight's shield held up against a hit a little over 8 million Newtons? Well, yeah. Raven's soul self is tougher than Donna Troy, who can shrug off a blast worth 296 trillion Newtons. Yeah, GG. Uh, 16 more zeros. In case you're wondering. And don't forget, Twilight had the power of four alicorns at that time. The shield wouldn't have saved her from Raven's soul self anyway. Not only could it absorb Twilight's powers and emotions, and not only was it capable of operating while Raven was unconscious, 
But it also made a mean dive bomber. Raven's soul self could fly at speeds exceeding Mach 36. Since it's often been used as a battering ram to hit enemies, we know it has mass, but not exactly how much. However, given its size, strength, and durability far exceeds Raven's own, its mass is likely greater than hers. Let's yeah. just lowball it and say they're equal, all right? Sure. Adding Raven's mass to the Mach 36 calculation, the Soul Self's ramming force at top speed comes to 15 million newtons of force, far greater than what Twilight's shield has sustained. It is. Ain't no pony walking away from that. Plus, Twilight's positive attitude meant Raven didn't have to even worry about pain when using her emotions against her. While they may have matched each other in spells and skill, Raven's more powerful traits and exceptional Soul Self earned her a hard-fought victory. Yep, Raven really ponied up for this one. Really? The winner is Raven. Well, fair enough. So, who's next? Thanks for watching, guys. If you want to see commentary on this episode, just click that little box over there and start a first membership trial. And if you want the battle music for yourself, you can click the link in the description below and get it off iTunes. See you in the next one. And next time is... Uh... Jojo? Oh! Neat! And I'm not familiar with the other one. So yeah, <laughs> interesting one. <laughs> oh, I do love these that battles. The most, the more silly ones. They actually tend to be some of the best. Yes, the one with the, the air pony and Deadpool. Oh, that was just a laughter. Anyway, the animation was good for it, and it makes sense. Raven is a, quite a powerful character. Victor, my nothing with my little pony, fortunately. Anyway, people, I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, until next time, don't forget to like, subscribe, and well, we know the deal. Until then, I'll see you around. Ta ta!